Hello. Welcome again to sunny Sanibel Island, Florida. It is hotter than a mother outside. It is 90 degrees. I used to live here all the time. You get yourself acclimated after a month or two. There are a couple of nice eagles around here. I'm going to whip out the Tamron here in a little bit. As the sun's setting, it's becoming great for photography. Of course, everything in photography is about either composition or light manipulation and obviously I can't manipulate the sun so I'm a slave to it rising and setting. Anything, actually general rule of photography, that is anything between like uh, 10 a.m. and like 5 p.m. is worthless. Okay, it's all about sunrise and sunset. There's only so much you can do in the post-processing too. Um, one thing that you'll never hear talked about in any, and there's nothing you can do about it, so why even write about it? Why even talk about it? But I get sick of people talking about, you know, there's a Sony sensor in the Nikon D810, or there's a Toshiba sensor in the Nikon D100. Well, this is true, but more important than that is the secret sauce that neither Canon, or Fuji, nor Nikon, or anybody else will talk about, and that's the SNR firmware algorithms and the AD converters that process that image. Now, I'm filming this currently in Nikon D750, but it has an Nikon D610 sensor in it. So why is this, the output on the Nikon D750 so much superior, especially in low light? It actually has a lot of the same attributes as the D610 sensor. But why is the, uh, the low light so much better on the D750? Is it a different sensor? No, it's the same sensor. It is the AD converters, but more importantly, it is the SNR firmware algorithms that actually reduce out a lot of that noise. This is the secret stuff that you're actually going to have to take the camera apart and go into. Uh, you have to be some sort of tech genius and have a lab and backwards engineer. And I know Canon does this, the Nikon stuff, and Nikon does it, the Canon stuff. They'll never talk about it, but they're always checking each other's stuff out to see what sort of SNR firmware algorithms are applied to a certain processor. And also, the, uh, the actual image processor in the D750 is not a 24 megapixel sensor. It can achieve, I believe, a maximum up to 32. 32 megabit sensor. Megapixel sensor, excuse me. My brain is fried from the heat. Um, the newest Canon, which is a 50.1 megapixel sensor, is, I believe, technically, maximum output is 62. But the delivery mechanism, the processing of that signal, the ability to shoot in continuous high for sports action photography and buffer and process that and actually have the specific card to be able to write that fast is not currently yet available. Now they are coming out with the new CFast cards, the, the even faster breed for uh, the new breed of uh, sensors which are going to be full frame sensors with DX megapixel densities. I mean, that's the only thing that's new that's coming out. This is why currently Canon and Nikon and uh, Tamron are making these uh, bigger lenses that even have ginormous, I mean, like the newest 24 to 70. I mean, it has a ginormous, uh, and by the way, the reviews came out on it and is exactly what I predicted it would be. It, it's a, it's a, it's a, a dull dud. It's got better corner to corner. They're actually designing it for the new breed of sensors. What Canon already came out with, Nikon's coming out with, and that is FX sensors with DX megapixel densities. And uh, Nikon is getting ahead of the game, and they're actually changing over their very primary lenses, and Nikon's number one primary lens, and that's why it was revamped. People say, well, Nikon's going to improve uh, the, the 2470 2.8 lens, which is the wedding lens, and the main lens a lot of professional photographers use as their go-to lens. They weren't revamping that lens to update it and make it a little bit faster and change things around and they didn't increase the front filter size and the front element size and of course they increased the length. I mean the lens is a good bit heavier, the front element's a good bit bigger. They didn't do all that stuff to revamp the 24-70. Well, 24-70, 2.8's out there. It's not the reason they did it. The reason they did it is to make way they're actually having their glass be prepared for the rollout next year of what Canon has already rolled out, which are full frames. Listen to me now, because this is important. What Canon has already rolled out, what Nikon's going to roll out. This is the future of photography. This is what's happening. No ifs, ands, or buts. No debate. No dispute. This is it. Period. There is no debate on this. The full frame sensors with DX megapixel densities. It used to be the case that the photo sites weren't big enough on DX, especially for low light. 
that there was a, you know, a significant advantage of full frame sensors over DX sensors. That's not the case anymore. The same thing that was discovered about 30 years ago in radio astronomy, instead of building one gigantic bastard ass dish like Arecibo, what is it down in Puerto Rico or Dominican Republic? I can't remember. Instead of building ginormous bass astrid huge satellite, uh, excuse me, huge receiver dishes for radio astronomy, they figured out with the application of SNR firmware to reduce out that noise that they could actually build uh, VLAs, very large array, use a bunch of tiny little uh, receiver dishes and arrays. A lot cheaper, a lot faster than building one super ginormous bastard dish. The same thing in radio astronomy applies to, yes, it's exactly the same. SNR firmware reduces out the noise. There's a specific name for it, my brain is fried from the heat right now, of uh, this sort of noise elimination uh, firmware algorithm. But that is what Nikon and Canon's already rolled out their model, their 50 megapixel. They can make the most beautiful woman on earth look like a butt ugly dog if you take an awesomely sharp picture of her and just blow the hell out of it. You can see every little uh, subcutaneous, uh, you know, nasty, disgusting, you know, broken blood vessel and, you know, just sort of every sort of ugly. It would be great for a nature photographer that want to shoot a bird up there on the top of the lighthouse and blow the piss snot out of it. So I want to take a 50 millimeter shot of that bird, then I'm going to blow the piss snot out of that tiny little part of the uh, <laughs> of the full frame image. Uh, it's great for that, but you know, as a professional photographer, you're supposed to like stick that big ass lens on there. Okay. Anyway, the point in this video is is that the sensors are nowhere near as important as you think. Well, you know, there's a, a Sony sensor in my Nikon D810. Well, there's a Toshiba sensor in my Nikon D7100. And there is an Icon D610 sensor and the Icon D750, same sensor, but different AD converters and different SNR firmware algorithms. And it's also not a 24 megapixel sensor. It's something like a 32. The same way Canon's 50 megapixel plus sensor is really like a 62, but it has to be about what can be transferred and buffered to the card. Okay, yeah, great. Okay, so Canon could technically make that a 60 megapixel sensor. But if the write speed and the buffering on it is so slow, people are like, oh great, you know, it's just like a ginormous 60 megapixel sensor, but you know, you know, the maximum continuous high on the thing might be like three frames per second. Nobody's gonna buy that $3,000 camera. So it's limited. Every sensor out there is limited. The, 20, the, the sensor on the Nikon D700, the sensor on the Nikon D750, same thing on the Nikon D810, that's technically not a 36 megapixel sensor. I think it maxes out at potential, okay, a potential of 42 or 43 megabits, uh, megapixels, excuse me. My brain is fried from the heat, you're gonna have to forgive me. I've uh, been sunburned a couple days ago. Uh, so you need to think about that. Is there anything you could do about it? No, there's not a damn thing you could do about it. But is it nice to know that and be more informed about what the hell is going on between your SD card, your compact flash card, and your sensor? Yeah, it is, because there's that magic gray area in there that you won't read about anywhere online. It's like, well, we got a sensor here and we got a card over here. What happens between those two, we have no effing idea. And you're not going to read about it. You know, you read some general stuff, but there's no specifics. And uh, the specific uh, secret sauce that Nikon uses or Canon uses or Fuji or anybody else uses or Sony, you know, they're not going to tell you for obvious reasons. But that stuff is incredibly important. It's as important, if not more important, than what's going on in the sensor. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.